वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम कूणाल चट्टोपाध्याय प्रोफेसर ऑफ कम्पेरेटिव लिटरेचर जादवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी वी आर डूइंग रीडिंग न्यू लिटरेचर्स इन इंग्लिश एंड दिस मॉड्यूल इज ऑन डिजिटल ह्यूमैनिटीज एंड न्यू लिटरेचर आर्काइविंग एंड डिजिटाइजेशन एंड आवर ऑब्जेक्टिव इन दिस मॉड्यूल are to understand initially by defining digital humanities to examine how the term originated to look at the relationship between globalization and digital humanities what is included and what is excluded when we use the term archiving and how archiving in digital humanities or dh differs from the archivists classical notions of archiving the problems posed by digital technology to archiving and very introductory discussions on metadata visualization and data mining when we talk about definitions we need to begin with the reality that by now computers have been part of our lives for decades even in india where since the late 1980s they have come in in a big way the era when people would argue that we need to campaign to stop computers because people will lose jobs etc etc is long in the past and in this last 40 50 years uh digital humanities has accumulated a robust professional apparatus the reason why it's connected more closely to english is the international dominance of english as the standard language of the internet an annual international conference named digital humanities has been hosted for many years by the alliance of digital humanities organizations Blackwell had a companion to digital humanities many years back and now recently Wiley Blackwell has brought out its new companion to digital humanities and the University of uh, Chicago uh, University of Illinois Press has a book series titled Topics in the Digital Humanities there are refereed journals for the field and in india jadavpur university launched a course on digital humanities under the project equal across the world there are a hundred digital humanities centers and institutes clearly it's arrived now this still doesn't really define it clearly enough so what is it it's a field of study research teaching an invention concerned with the intersection of computing and the disciplines of the humanities it is methodological by nature and interdisciplinary in scope formally when we are talking about humanities we are not talking english we are talking about a range of disciplines which come from the renaissance concept of the studia humanitatis and of course that in turn intersects with computers and computing now what we need to stress is that it's not something that has emerged simply out of a conscious decision of one or a group of people to create some new interdisciplinary field our present day experience of the humanities whether we are talking of literature films music are all profoundly impacted by the digital technologies it's not a matter of personal choice whether we are more comfortable with printed books or magazines or online texts of a library and think of jstor and it's uh, as if somebody prefers going to a physical library browsing the journals somebody else prefers to search 
access and search, JSTOR or Project Muse. It's much more than that. If you think of a book printed in India in the 1960s, it was first either handwritten or typed by the author or her typist, then composed either by hand composing or by linotype and then printed and bound. Now, before the first hard copy is placed on the shelves, the book has in all likelihood been composed usually by the author. Occasionally, in case of authors of an earlier generation, even today, by a paid typist in a computer. It's then turned from Word into the required software by the publisher or the printer and the images and diagrams are uh, enhanced. Now this preliminary explanation could be refined quantitatively using some of the tools developed by digital humanities itself such as using tools to mine the proceedings from the annual digital humanities conferences and develop lists of topic frequencies or co-locate key terms or visualize the paper's citation networks. Alternately, we can use qualitative methods examining sets of projects from different digital humanities institutions or centers its connection with literature has now been asserted and institutionalized for some time. At the 2009 MLA convention at Philadelphia, there was a major subfield on digital humanities. So, we can say digital humanities is not a field where the relationship between humanities and technologies are defined once and for all and fixed absolutely. It's still fluid. And if we look at the origins of the name, we see the sources from which these come. The name Digital Humanities come about through two events occurring close together in time. One was the plan for the publication of Blackwell's original companion to Digital Humanities, initially proposed as a companion to humanities computing by using digital rather than digitized, the stress was sought to be moved away from mere digitization. The other incident was the attempt to form an alliance for digital humanities organizations by merging the Association for Computers in the Humanities and the Association for Literary and Linguistic Computing. Finally, in 2008, the US federal funding was earmarked for digital humanities, putting a seal of official governmental approval to the term. At the 2009 MLA convention, digital humanities was present in two ways, a number of panels on different aspects of digital humanities and the extensive presence of Twitter, a digital technique which relies on sending messages using exactly 140 characters, not words, but just characters. Amanda French ran the numbers and concluded that around 48% of attendees at the Digital Humanities 2009 conference were tweeting the sessions. By contrast, only 3% of MLA convention attendees tweeted. But according to French's data, out of about 7,800 attendees at the MLA convention, the 256 who tweeted of them, the majority were people already associated with digital humanities through their existing networks of followers. Jennifer Howard, a veteran journalist of the Chronicle of Higher Education, noted the centrality of Twitter to the DH crowd and its impact on scholarly communication, going so far as to include people's Twitter identities in her roundup of major stories from the convention. What we next need to consider is the relationship between globalization and the widespread acceptance of digital humanities. Digital humanities has seen a rise due to the neoliberal economic turn and its impact on the public universities. 
at state as state funding erodes tuition and other fees and educational costs rise endowments and private financial aid to public educational institutions also come down and as full time faculty are increasingly replaced by differentially waged staff often part timers or guest faculty or other names in other countries like adjuncts what happens is students research scholars younger and sometimes also older faculty have come together to use digital humanities as a conscious tool so what is it what is dh and what is it doing in literature departments the second part is easier to answer first after numerals text is the easiest thing to manipulate there is a long tradition of text based data processing that was within the capabilities of even some of the earliest computer systems and that has for decades fed research in fields like stylistics linguistics and author attribution studies second there is a long connection between computers and composition third there was a convergence between a discussion on editorial methods in the 1980s and another on a discussion to implement electronic archives and editions fourth around the same time there began a discussion on hypertext and other forms of electronic literature fifth the shift of literature departments to culture studies made them open to computers as central artifacts thus stuart hall and his collaborators created a reader around the sony walkman in recent times on one hand there has been a growth of electronic reading via kindle ipad and other instruments and on the other hand there has been a vast expansion in text digitization such as project gutenberg and google books so digital humanities and their archiving and digitization of the new literature have also been connected to new property regimes coming in the wake of the foundation of the world trade organization and the kind of impact the notion of intellectual property has had on scholars and their labor one particular issue is the forms of academic publication peer review over formalized citation styles connected to a, a cycle of publication permanent job api score promotion are seen by many scholars as bureaucratic institutionalization these in turn assist a set of privileged periodicals and publishing houses to control digitization in ways that many academics dislike we are all aware of searching the net finding an article which appears to be exactly what we were looking for only to be blocked because we do not have access to it because we do not have institutional access or because we have to pay substantial amounts in dollars digital humanities is at this point a cry for an open scholarship and a pedagogy that are collaborative and depend on human networks and that are accessible online round the clock across the world so here we move on to the question of inclusions and exclusions what are we including in dh what are we excluding there is a problem with definitions that are too inclusive but excessive rigidity also poses problems are we suggesting that dh is little more than old words using new tools when we are talking about google books or project gutenberg and so on are we then talking about setups like the folger shakespeare library and its digital resources or the bichitra project the online rabindranath tagore variorum but even in these the tools actually transform the way we handle the texts these are very different from the physical archives that scholars have been accustomed to in the past as derida explains i quote him the technical structure of the archiving archive also determines the structure of the archivable content even in its very coming into existence and in its relationship to the future end of quotation others argue that digital tools enable the generation of new literary forms for example there is 
the rise of interactive fiction. It could be argued that 19th century novelists writing serial novels in journals also had an interactive mode. One can think of both Charles Dickens and Bonkin Chandra Chattopadhyay. But interactive fiction or IF is somewhat different. It is software simulating environments where players used text commands to control characters and influence the environment. Awareness of IF enables authors like Shomit Basu in his Game World trilogy to develop a plot where players and characters become aware of each other. Stephen Ramsey in a 2011 presentation asks, does being in DH mean knowing how to code or not? Does it have to be about text? He answers based on actual situations that the response varies from university to university. But the core issue is no discipline can survive without actively engage with disciplinary concerns. Stressing the discipline is therefore about building things. So he wants to include people who theorize about building, people who design so that others might build, those who supervise building, where he ignores the issue of coding since many people build without knowing programming and including people seeking to rebuild the broken down system of scholarly publishing but he wanted to exclude all who were not engaged in building. At this point we need to move on to archiving because digital archives have come to stay and yet digital archives seem to mean something very different from what archivists have meant for the past several hundred years. In the physical world, we make a distinction between libraries and archives. The library is a repository of books and periodicals, whereas the archives keep documents, photographs, ephemera. When we think of digital archives, there can be somewhat of a shift. Late in the 20th century, the National Library Calcutta decided that early books, that is books printed in the 19th century, were becoming too damaged and their digitization was desirable. Thus, in the process of digitization, archives and libraries can be somewhat blurred. Digital archives are much favored as they seem to hold out a series of advantages. First, the physical paper might be damaged as we have seen just now. Digitizing appears to give it greater longevity. Second, copying by whatever means of physical documents, photocopy, photograph, eventually leads to a certain loss of quality. Digitization makes it possible to copy and recopy without any such loss of quality. But digitizing a mass of material does not complete the process of creating the archive. How does an archivist look at a massive archive consisting of thousands of digital objects and create an attractive digital library or archive useful for the non-specialists? It is possible that the domination of literature is a major factor in this shift. As we noted, humanities comes from the term studia humanitatis. That included the study of grammar, poetics, rhetoric, history and moral philosophy. Turned into modern disciplines, however, digital humanities and its archives all too often focus on literary studies rather than philosophy, history or political science. Political science and history in particular are disciplines that extensively use archives proper at least for the last two centuries. And archivists are definitely not expected to take part in selection activities, retaining some and rejecting other material as part of the creation of the archives. In classical archives, preserving context is also a vital part of retaining authenticity, which means that if you have a document which is part of one particular file, you keep it in that particular file. It doesn't matter that some other document throwing light on that first document is part of a completely different file. For example, when you are talking about the foreign policy of the Soviet Union and you have some material in the Stalin archives and others in the communist international Dimitrov archives, you have to keep them separate. The scholar has to find them out. It's not possible for an archivist to decide that let's bring these together because one scholar someday might find it useful to look at these two together.
डिजिटल ह्यूमैनिटीज आर्काइव्स में मेक सेंस टू हिस्ट्री लिटरेरी स्कॉलर्स बट नॉट ऑफन टू हिस्टोरियंस और पॉलिटिकल साइंटिस्ट और अदर ह्यूमैनिस्ट द डी एच रिस्पॉन्स कुड बी वन ओरेचर विच इज समाइम्स मिसलीडिंगली कॉल्ड ओरल लिटरेचर हैज टू बी प्रिजर्व एंड दिस इन्वॉल्व सिलेक्शन बिकॉज इट्स बेस्ड ऑन फील्ड वर्क टू द आर्काइव्स क्रिएटेड बाई डिजिटल ह्यूमैनिस्ट आर दमसेल्वस archives in that they represent the records of those people's own professional activities third in the field of dh archives has a different meaning just as realism has different meanings in literature and political science but when we look at digital archives digital technology itself creates a new set of problems these may not be insurmountable but we need to recognize that it's a new kind of problem the archive is a place where you store documents for long periods in the west bengal state archives for example a historian will be finding early documents of the east india company dating back to the plots against sirajuddolla the grant of diwani and so on even today scholars working on that particular subject will have to go back to that archive today the average student uses computers that 25 years ago even cutting edge workers could not use this means the stored material also requires constant upgradation secondly while digitization is easy takes virtual space which is relatively cheaper to buy and expand than real space it has its own problems keeping online archives for 20 years to say nothing of 200 is a difficult matter typically a website cannot be maintained for over 5 years at one go funding and other issues come up even the space can be redefined we can say that there are three core challenges in terms of technology the first is redundancy computer data is stored in compressed magnetic disks and these eventually wear out so repeated copying and locating the copies in different sites is essential this is often not clear to many practitioners of dh who come from mainly literary background with li relatively little computer knowledge second accessibility the whole point of creating the archive is to ensure that scholars at a later date get access to the data typically a scholar will search for certain type of information two aspects come in here one is retrieval which is dependent on how the data is coded and stored uh the other is forward and backward compatibility which means that you created data at a particular time say 2000 how will it be retrieved in 2050 finally you have the question of renewal and depreciation hardware wears out domain names are not purchased as is our conception with property in the physical world but merely leased softwares also change thus records need to be made and stored in forms that permit easier renewal and the tackling of depreciation open technology rather than technology over which one concern holds complete control is preferable we now move to metadata and visualization people listen to music post photos locate video manage finances connect with others through sms and other things and these are all done using a variety of applications and online techniques youtube instagram email mms twitter this content comes with metadata information about the items creation name topic features and the like metadata is key to the functionality of the systems holding the content enabling users to find items of interest record essential information about them and share that information with others we can say that metadata can be divided into three types descriptive metadata which describes for the purpose of identification title author keyword structural metadata which indicates how compound objects are put together for example how pages come together to form chapters administrative metadata which gives data about when and how a resource was created who can access it and other technical information visual data exploration allows faster data exploration and generally provides a better result than automatic data mining algorithms the classification of 
Visual data mining techniques are done in three dimensions, data type to be visualized, visualization technique, and interaction and distortion. There exists a large number of different visualization techniques, all dependent on the visual suitability to the type of data that are to be visualized. Finally, uh, you have different techniques which you can use for visually looking at first the gross and then the micro data, the details of the data. Uh, the role of data mining to extract information from a database that the user did not already know about is important. The result is findings of models and patterns which describes useful relationships. There are many ways to graphically represent a model. The visualizations that are used should therefore be chosen to maximize the value for the viewer. To be able to do this, we need to understand the user's needs and design the visualization after that. This is where the literary scholar and the computer activist need to come together, either two persons working in collaboration or traditional literary departments redesigning themselves to train students into learning about these activities as well.